sunshine or a shy garlic do come out. I had no idea the south of France was so beautiful. Not bad. It's heavenly. Just look at the lights of that yacht reflected on the water. Oh, I am so happy. Oh, yeah. Aren't you? Of course I am. Just Tremendously happy. Just to think here we are, you and I, on our honeymoon. Yes, things have come to a pretty pass. Don't laugh at me. You mustn't be blasé about honeymoons just because this is your second. That's silly. Have I annoyed you by saying that? Just a little. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Kiss me. There. Not so enthusiastic. Hey, Sean. Three times, please. I'm superstitious. You know, you really are very sweet. Are you glad you're married to me? Of course I'm glad. How glad? Incredibly, magnificently glad. How lovely. You know, we really ought to go in and change. Gladder than before. Why do you keep harping on that? It's on my mind, and yours too, I expect. It isn't anything of the sort. She was pretty, wasn't she? Mandira? Very. Prettier than I am? Much. Ishan! She was pretty and sleek, and her legs were long and slim. Uh, and her... Could she uh, play the piano as well as I can? Mm, I don't believe she could play the piano at all. Aha! Uh -huh. Had she my talent for organization? No, but I don't believe she had your mother either. <laughs> I don't believe you like mother. Like her? I can't bear her. Ishan, she's a darling underneath. I never got underneath. <laughs> it makes me unhappy to think you don't like mother. Nonsense. I believe the only reason you married me was to get away from her. The only reason I married you was because I loved you. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I love you far more than Mondira loved you. I'll never make you miserable like she did. We made each other miserable. It was all her fault. You know it was. She was a fool to lose you. We lost each other. She lost you with her violent temper and carryings on. Will you please stop talking about Mondira? But I'm very glad, because if she hadn't been wicked and uncontrolled and unfaithful, we wouldn't be here now. She wasn't unfaithful. How do you know? I bet she was. You do hate her, don't you? No, I don't hate her. She has some very nice qualities. Considering what a hell she made of your life, you're very nice about her. Most men would be vindictive. What's the use of all that? It's, it's all over now. It was such a long time ago. Five years isn't very long. Yes, it is. Do you think you could ever love her again? Now <laughs> then, Sundari. But could you? No, I couldn't. I, I love you. Yes, but you love me differently. I know that. More wisely, perhaps. I'm glad. I'd rather have that sort of love. Wise love. You know, you're right. Love is of no use unless it's wise and kind. Something tremendously cozy, unfurried by scenes and jealousies. That's what I've always wanted, what I've always expected, really. Oh dear, I hope I'm not going to be too dull for you. Sweetheart, as though you could ever be dull. I'm much older than you. Not very much, seven years. And the music's even stopped. So that we can hear the sea. We'll go bathe in the sea tomorrow morning. I mustn't get sunburned. Why not? I hate it on women. Very well, you shan't. I hope you don't hate it on men. Of course not. I think it's suitable to men. I like a man to be a man. Hmm. If you'd like me to smoke a pipe, I'll try and master it. Sweet. Are you going to understand me and manage me and run me without my knowing it? I think you're being a little unkind. No, no, I, I don't mean to be. I was, I was just wondering. Well? I was wondering what was going on in your mind. What your plans are, really. My plans? Ishan? You know, apart from loving me and all that, you must have plans. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Perhaps it's subconscious then. Age-old instincts working away deep down, mincing up little bits of experience for future use, watching me carefully like a sharp-eyed kitten. How can you be so horrid? I said kitten, not cat. A kitten's 
grow into cats? Let that be a warning to you. What's the matter, Ishu? Are you hungry? No, 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 not a bit. You're behaving very strangely all of a sudden and very cruel. Just because I'm feminine, it doesn't mean that I'm crafty or calculating. Sweetie, I didn't say you were either one of those things. I hate these half-masculine women who go banging about. I should hate anybody who goes banging about. I thought you needed some quiet womanliness after Mondira. Why do you go on and on about that woman? It's only natural, I guess, isn't it? What do you want to find out? Why did you both actually divorce one another? She divorced me for cruelty and flagrant infidelity. Misplaced chivalry, I call it. Why didn't you divorce her? It would not have been the action of a gentleman, whatever that may mean. I think she got off very lightly. Once and for all, will you please stop talking about her? Yes, dear. I, I don't wish to see her again or hear her name mentioned. Is that understood? Very well, darling. Thank you. Where did you spend your honeymoon? Samoritz, be quiet. I hate Samoritz. So do I, prettily. Now, are we dining at the casino or at the restaurant? Ishan, I love you. I love you. I love you. Good. Now can we go in and dress? Kiss me first. Mm. Casino? Are you a gambler? You never told me. Every once in a way. I shall sit just behind your chair and bring you luck. That would be fatal. Mandy? Yes, darling? Come outside, the view is wonderful. Coming, darling, I'll be there in a minute. Ta-da! Oh, God, you look wonderful. Thank you, darling. Like a beautiful advertisement for something. Nothing peculiar, I hope. I can hardly believe it's true. You and I, mm -hmm. here, alone together, married, do you love me? Why do you think I'm here, alone, with you? Of course I love you. More than... Now then, none of that. No, but do you love me more than you loved Ishan? Oh, I don't remember. It was such a long time ago. Not so very long. All my life ago. I'd like to break his damn neck. Really? Why? For making you unhappy. Oh, it was mutual, trust me. Rubbish, it was all his fault. You know that. Swine. Don't be so vehement, darling. I'll never treat you like that. That's right. I love you too much. So did he. Fine sort of love, that is. He struck you once, didn't he? More than once. Where? Several places. What a cat. Oh, I struck him too. I broke seven plates, four lamps, and one chandelier right over his head. <laughs> it was very satisfying. You must have been driven to destruction. Yes, I was, but let's not talk about it, please. We're here to talk about us and our life together. He doesn't know what he's lost. Darling, look at the lights of that yacht reflected on the water. Isn't it beautiful? I wonder whose it is. Where did you spend your honeymoon? Village. Just curious, that's all. Sam Maurice, it was so much fun. I hate Sam Maurice. So do I. Did he start quarreling with you right away? Within the first few days. And you loved him? Yes, Viraj. Oh, you poor child. Oh, you must try not to be so pompous, dear. Mandy. I was never a poor child. Figure of speech, darling, that's all. Yes. I suffered a good deal and had my heart broken, but it wasn't an innocent girlish heart. It was jagged with sophistication. You know, that caused many of my rows with Ishan. It irritated him because he knew I could see right through him. Oh, I don't mind how much you see through me. Sweet. I'm going to make you happy. Are you? By looking after you and seeing that you're all right, you know. No, I don't know. You know, I think you love me quite differently from the way you loved Ishan. Oh, do stop harping on Ishan! It's true, though, isn't it? I love you much more calmly, if that's what you mean. More lastingly? I expect so. Do you remember when I first met you? Yes, distinctly. At Marion Vale's party? Yes. Wasn't it wonderful? Love at first sight. Where did you first meet Ishan? What the hell with Ishan? Mandy. No, Viraj, I forbid you to mention his name again. I'm sick and tired of the sound of it. You must be raving mad. Here we are to make plans for our future, with the moon coming up and the music playing, and all you can do is talk about my first husband. It's downright sacrilegious. Don't be angry. Well, it's very, very, very annoying, Viraj. Will you forgive me? 
Yes, but only if you promise not to do it again. I promise. Well, you better go and get dressed now. You haven't bathed us yet. Oh, uh, where should we dine? Open air barbecue or at the casino? I think the casino's more fun. We can play bool afterwards. No, dear, we can't. Don't you like dear old bool? No, I hate dear old bool. We'll play a lovely game of Shem and the Fair. Not at the big table. Maybe at the biggest table. You're not a terrible gambler, are you? Inveterate chance rules my life. What nonsense. How can you say it's nonsense? It was chance meeting you. It was chance falling in love. And it's chance that we're here, particularly after your driving. You know, everything that happens is chance. You know, I'm quite scared of you at close quarters. You seem somehow different, much wilder than I thought you were. Wilder? Oh, Viraj, I've never felt less wild in my entire life. A bit strained, I grant you, but that's probably this newly married atmosphere. You can't expect anything else. After all, honeymooning is such an overrated amusement. Oh, you say that because you had a ghastly experience before. There you go again. Still, it couldn't fail to embitter you a little. The honeymoon wasn't such a ghastly experience, really. It was afterwards that was so awful. I intend to make you forget it all. And you're not going to succeed by making constant references to it. I wish I knew you better. It's just as well you don't. You know, the woman should always retain a certain amount of alluring feminine mystery for the man. And what about the man? Isn't he allowed to have any mystery? Absolutely none. Transparent as glass. Oh, I see. Don't worry, darling. It doesn't always turn out like that. It's only supposed to. Well, I'm glad I'm normal. What an odd thing to be glad about. Why? Well, aren't you? I'm not so sure I'm normal. Oh, Mandy, of course you are. Sweetly, divinely normal. You know, I think very few people are completely normal, really, deep down in their private lives. It all depends on a combination of circumstances. If all the various cosmic thingamies fuse at the same moment and the right spark is struck, there's no knowing what one might do. That was the trouble with Ishan and me. We were like two violent acids bubbling about in a nasty little matrimonial bottle. You know, I don't think you're nearly as complex as you think you are. I don't think I'm particularly complex, but I know I'm unreliable. You're frightening me horribly. In what way unreliable? I'm so apt to see things the wrong way around. What sort of things? You know, morals, what one should do and what one shouldn't. Oh, darling, you're so sweet. Oh, that's most encouraging, Viraj. Thank you. But you really must go and get dressed now. Come along. Kiss me. Well. There. Hurry along now, please. I'm ready. Okay, give me ten minutes. I'll bring the cocktails out here when they come, darling. All right. Yes? I brought the cocktails out here, so do hurry. Never mind. We'll send down to the kitchen for some coach nail. Don't be silly. Hurry. Started yet. 
I can't help but feel that this is all very unfortunate. Are you happy? Perfectly. Then it's all right then, isn't it? Are you happy? Ecstatic. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. We should probably meet again sometime. Bye. Goodbye. Oh. Cocktail, please. <gasps> Ishan, what's the matter? I, 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 I feel very odd. Odd? What do you mean, ill? Yes, yes, ill. What sort of ill? We, 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 we must leave at once. Leave? Yes, Sundari, leave immediately. Ishan! I have, I have a strange foreboding. You must be mad. Listen, darling, I want you to be very sweet and very patient and very kind and very understanding and not be angry or ask any questions or anything like that. I have an absolute conviction that our whole future happiness depends upon our leaving this place this very instant. Why? I can't tell you why. But we've only just come. I know, but it can't be helped. What's happened? Tell me, what's happened? Nothing has happened. You look like I've gone out of your mind. No, I haven't lost my mind, but I shall if you stay here another hour. You're not drunk, are you? Of course I'm not drunk. What time have I had to get drunk? Darling, let's go and have some dinner, and then you'll feel so much better. Look, there's no use trying to humor me, all right? I'm serious. But please be reasonable. We've only just arrived. Everything's unpacked. It's our first night together. We can't leave now. We can have a first night together in Paris, Sundari. Look, I know this sounds crazy to you and utterly lacking in sense and reason. But I have second sight over certain things. I'm almost psychic. And I have this extraordinary sensation of impending disaster. If we stay here, something appalling is going to happen. I'm sure of it. Hysterical nonsense. It's not hysterical nonsense. Free sentiments are far from being hysterical nonsense. You remember the woman from the Titanic who cancelled the passage just because of a pre-sentiment? I don't see what that has to do with this. That has everything to do with it. She obeyed her instincts. That's what she did and it saved her life. All I ask is that I be allowed to obey my instincts. Do you mean there's going to be an earthquake or something? Yes, 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 very possibly. Or perhaps a very violent explosion. Explosion? There's nothing here that could explode. Oh, 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 oh. Ishan! Please bear with me, darling. I beseech you, just bear with me this once. I don't understand. It's horrid of you to do this. I'm not doing anything. I'm only asking you, imploring you, to come away with me from this place. But I love it here. There are thousands of other places, far nicer. Well, it's a pity we didn't go to one of them. Now listen to me, Sundari. No, why are you behaving like this? Why, why, why? I'll never ask you to give it to me over anything ever again. I won't think of going anywhere tonight. It's utterly ridiculous. I've done quite enough travel for one day, and I'm tired. You're as obstinate as a mule. I like that, I must say. You've got your nasty little feet dug into the ground, and you don't intend to budge an inch, do you? No, I do not. There's one thing in this world that infuriates me. It's sheer wanton stubbornness. I should like to cut your head off with a meat axe. Will you or will you not come with me to Paris? I've never been so miserable in my life. You're hateful and beastly. Mother was absolutely right. She said you had shifty eyes. Well, she can't talk. Hers are so close together you couldn't put a needle through them. You don't love me. Not one little bit. I wish I were dead. Will you or will you not come with me to Paris? No, no I won't. right when you said you weren't being normal. You're behaving like a lunatic. Oh, not at all. All I've done is ask you for a little favor. Little favor indeed. If we left now, we could be anywhere in a few hours. If we cross Siberia by train, we could be in China in a fortnight. But I see no reason to do it. Oh, please, please, please be sensible just for my sake. Sensible? Yes, sensible. I shall be absolutely miserable if we stay here. You don't want me to be absolutely miserable all through my honeymoon, do you? Well, why the hell did you not think of your sister's tragedy before? I forgot. You can't forget something like that. She was your sister, for God's sake. Stepsister. She was my stepsister. You had a stepsister? You never told me. Oh, how does it matter? I get the names, places, people completely muddled, Rajiv. 
Viraj. See what I mean? When I saw the casino there and in the moonlight, it all came back to me. When did this sister of yours die? Oh, years ago, but it just might as well have been yesterday. I can see her now, lying there dead with that dreadful expression on her face. Oh, and then all the awful business of taking the body back to England. Oh, it was terrible, awful. I never knew you had a sister. I haven't anymore. There's something behind all this. Don't be silly, Viraj. What could there be behind it? Well, for one thing, I know that you're lying. Viraj! Be honest, aren't you? I can't think how you can be so, so mean, suspicious and heartless. You're lying, Mandira. You never had a sister, dead or alive. I believe there was a stillborn in 19... What is your reason for all this? I told you I was unreliable. Why do you want to leave so badly? You'll be angry if I tell you the truth. What is it? I'm warning you. Tell me, please tell me. Ishan is here. What? I saw him. When? When you were having your bath. Where was he? Right here. Wearing a white, open, unbuttoned shirt. Open, unbuttoned shirt? Yes. Why not? It's summer, isn't it? You're lying again. I So he is here, so what of it? Oh, I couldn't enjoy my honeymoon with you, with Ishan liable to bounce in at any moment. Oh, really, Mandy? Don't you see how awful it is? It's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Did he see you? No, he was running. What was he running for? How on earth should I know? Don't be so annoying! But if he didn't see you, it doesn't matter, does it? No, it's not all right. We must leave immediately. But why? How can you be so appallingly obstinate? I'm not afraid of it. It isn't a question of being afraid, it's just a horrible, awkward situation. I'm damned if I'm going to let our honeymoon be upset by Ishan. Trust me, my last one was. <laughs> I don't believe he's here at all. He is here, I saw him. You saw a man running for whatever reason. How can you be so certain it was your ex who you haven't seen in the last five years? It was Ishan. Oh, it must have been an optical illusion. This half-light is very deceptive. It was no such thing. I absolutely refuse to change all our plans at the last moment just because you think you've seen Ishan. It's unreasonable and ridiculous of you to demand it. Even if he is here, I don't see that it matters. He'll probably be far more embarrassed than you and a damn good job too. And if he annoys you in any way, I'll knock him down. Oh, that would be charming, dear. Well, then let's not talk about it anymore. Do you mean to seriously sit there and imagine that this entire thing can be glossed over as easily as that? I'm not leaving, Mandira. If I start giving in to you this early, our lives together will be unbearable. <laughs> oh! I can see quite clearly that I've been foolish enough to marry a fat old gentleman in a club armchair. It's no use being cross. You're a pompous ass. Mandy! That's right, pompous ass. That's what I said and that's what I meant. Blown out with your own importance. Mandy, control yourself. Oh, get away from me! I can't bear to imagine that I am married to such an arrogant oath. <coughs> I shall be in the bar. When you're ready to come down and dine, let me know. Oh, go away! Just go away! I wish I were on it. I wish you were too. There's no need for you to be nasty. Yes, there is. Every need. I've never in my whole life had a greater urge to be nasty. And you've had some urges in your time, haven't you? If you start bickering with me, Mundira, I swear I'll throw you over the edge. Oh, try it. I dare you. Just try it. You upset everything. I upset were. everything. What about you? Ever since the first moment I was unlucky enough to set my eyes on you, 
My life has been a living hell. Oh, just shut up. There's no use in going on like that. Oh, there's no escape. There's no use ever. Stop being so melodramatic. Do you want a cocktail? There are two over there. There are two over there as well. Oh, we'll have my two first. Here. Blue. I can see that. <laughs> Shall we get roaring, screaming drunk? That's not going to help. We tried it once before and it was a dismal failure. It was lovely in the beginning. You have an immoral memory, Mundira. Here's to you. You know, I tried to leave the moment after I saw you, but he just wouldn't budge. What's his name? Viraj. Viraj Sinha. Mr. and Mrs. Viraj Sinha. Hmm. Mine wouldn't budge either. What's her name? Sundari. Sundari? <laughs> Sundari? <laughs> what? Nothing you like. Sundari, you know, it, it sounds like a cat's name. <laughs> I've never heard of any cat called Sundari. To Mr. and Mrs. Ishan Chopra. God, I pity the poor girl. Are you in love with this, <laughs> this Viraj? Of course I am. How oh, funny. I don't see anything particularly funny about it. You're in love with yours, aren't you? Oh, certainly. There you are, then. There we both are. What is she like? Fair. Oh. Very pretty. Oh, really? Plays the piano beautifully. How very comforting. Huh. How's your? I don't wish to discuss him. Doesn't matter. He'll probably be popping out in a minute, and I shall see for myself. Does he know I'm here? Yes, I told him. Oh. That's going to make things a whole lot easier. Oh, you needn't be frightened. He's not going to hurt you. If he comes anywhere near me, I'll scream the place down. <laughs> Does Sundari know I'm here? No. I, I told her I had a presentiment. I tried terribly hard to get her away. You know, I tried too. Oh, I can see us all driving out of the hotel in the morning for an early start. Lovely. Glory. Just lovely. So what happened to yours? Didn't you hear her screaming? She's down in the restaurant, I think. Mine is being grand. He's in the bar. You know, it, it really is awfully difficult. Have you known her long? Four months. We met in a house party in Norfolk. Very flat, Norfolk. Hmm. How old is dear Viraj? Oh, 37, or eight, or nine. I don't know. How old is Sundari? I blush to tell you, still in her 20. <gasps> You've got a mucker, all right. I shall reserve my opinion of your choice until I've met dear Viraj. I wish you wouldn't go on calling him Dear Viraj. It's really quite irritating. And that's how I see it. Dumpy, very considerate, with glasses. Dear Viraj. As I said before, I would rather not discuss him. At least I have good taste enough to refrain from making cheap tribes at your sundari. You said Norfolk was flat. That was no reflection on her, unless she made it flatter. <laughs> you know, your voice takes on an acidic quality whenever you mention her name. Fine, I will not mention it again. Good. Oh. And I will keep off dear Viraj. Thank you. The orchestra has a remarkably small repertoire. They don't seem to know anything else but this, do they? I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. I promise you things like big diamond rings by roses growing on stalks of clover. So you better think it you, over. You always had a very sweet voice, Mundira. Thank you. Look, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry about all this. I, I really am. You know, I, I wouldn't have had it happen for the world. I know, I'm sorry too. It's just, it's rotten luck. I'll go away tomorrow morning, whatever happens, so, so don't you worry. 
That's really nice of you. And I hope everything turns out splendidly for you and, and, and that you're very happy and all that. I hope the same for you too. Nasty, insistent little tune. It's extraordinary how potent cheap music can be. What exactly were you remembering, you know, at that moment? The Palace Hotel skating rink in the morning, bright, strong sunlight, and everyone whirling around in vivid colors. And you were kneeling down, putting on my skates for me. Yes, you'd fallen on your fanny a couple of moments <laughs> before. It was beastly of you to laugh like that. I felt so humiliated. Oh, poor darling. Do you remember waking up in the morning from standing out on the balcony, looking out across the valley? Oh, yeah. Blue shadows on white snow. Cleanliness beyond belief, high above everything else in the world. How beautiful it was. It's nice to know we had a few marvelous memories. A few. We had heaps, really. Only they fade into the background, and one only remembers the bad ones. Yes, what utter fools we were to have ruined it all. What utter, utter fools. You feel that way too? Do you? Of course. Why did we? The whole business was too much for us. We were, we were so ridiculously over in love. Funny, wasn't it? Yeah, horribly funny. Selfishness, cruelty, hatred, possessiveness. Petty jealousies. All those qualities came out in us only because we loved each other. Perhaps they were there anyhow. No, it's the love that does it. Oh, to hell with love. Yeah, to hell with love. And yet, here we are, again, starting afresh with two quite different people, in love all over again. Aren't we? Aren't we? Ishan. We're not in love all over again. And you know it. Good night, Monira. Ishan, Ishan, don't go, please. Please come back. I have to go find Sundari. I suppose I must go and find Viraj. Well, then why don't you? I don't want to. You know, this is shameful. Shameful of Please us. Please don't, 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 don't say another word. I feel terrible. We won't talk about ourselves anymore. Please, but just don't leave me, at least until I pull myself together. Very well. So what have you been doing lately, over the last few years? I went round the world, you know, after... Yes, yes, I know, I know. So how was it? The world? Yes. Oh, highly enjoyable. China must have been very interesting. Very big, China. And Japan? Very small. <laughs> Did you finally visit the Taj Mahal? How was it? Unbelievable. It was sort of a dream. It must have been the moonlight. I expect you saw it in the moonlight. Yes. Moonlight is, is very deceptive. And it didn't look like a biscuit box, did it? I always thought that it might. Darling, I love you so. Uh, did you see any sacred elephants? I've never loved anyone else for an instant. Ishan, Ishan, stop it. Please stop it. You know, you love me too, don't you? There's no doubt anywhere, is there? No, no doubt at all. You're looking lovely in this damn moonlight. Your eyes are shining, your skin is clear and cool, and you're growing lovelier and lovelier every second as I look at you. You don't hold any mystery for me, darling. Do you mind? There isn't a particle of you that I don't know, remember, and want. I'm so glad, my sweet. More than any desire. Anywhere deep down in my deepest heart, I want you back again, please. Oh, Sean. I don't know. I'm lost. 
Heartily. We must think quickly or quickly. Escape. Together? Yes, now. No, now. no, 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 we can't. We can't. We must. No, we can't. We must. It would break Viraj's heart. And Sundari too, probably. But think of the hell we'd be leading them into if we stayed. Loving, pretending to love them and loving each other so, so, so desperately. We must tell them. What? Call them and tell them. No, 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 no. That's, that's impossible. It's honest. I can't help how honest it is, but it's too horrible to think of. What should we say? How should we start? Well, what do you propose to do then, as it is they might appear at any moment now? We have to decide right now, this very minute. Run away together or stay with them and never see each other ever again, ever. But don't be silly. What choice is there? No choice at all. Now come. No, no, no. Wait. This is sheer raving madness. Something's happened to us. We are not being saved. We never were. <laughs> Where shall we go? Paris first. My car's in the garage already. They'll follow us. It doesn't matter once the thing is done. I have a flat in Paris. Good. Does Viraj know? He knows I have one, but he doesn't have the faintest idea where. Better and better. Oh, we're being so terribly bad. We'll pay for this. I know we will. It can't be helped. Starting all those awful rows again. No, 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 no. We're older now and wiser. What difference does that make? The moment I of that it's a bit nervy, off we'll go again. Stop shilly shalling, Mundira. I'm only trying to be sensible. Well, you're only succeeding in being completely idiotic. Completely idiotic indeed. What about you? Now look here, Mundira. Oh, my Oh. Darling, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I no, 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 I refuse to move from here unless we have a pact, a sacred pact, never to quarrel again. Easy to make, but difficult to keep. No, my love, it's the bickering that always starts it. The moment we notice we're bickering either of us, we should promise on our honor to stop dead. We'll think of a, of a, a word or a crack catchphrase, which when either of us says it automatically cuts out all conversation for at least five minutes. Two minutes, dear, with an option for renewal. Very well, what shall it be? Solomon Isaacs. That'll do. Let's go. No, 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 wait. What if we see either of them on our way out? We run like stags. What about our luggage? Forget our luggage. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. It's so wicked of me. Maybe I shouldn't eat you. My sweet. It's been so long since you called me that. Say it again. My issue. Oh, this is love. This is betrayal. Only to those who don't know love. Now, darling, will you behave? But he should. Solomon Isaacs. Let's go. Mandy. Mandy. Oh, Mandy. Sweetie. Mandy. Mandy. funny. I was just looking for my wife. It's quite a coincidence. It's, it's nice here, isn't it? Lovely. Have you been here long? No, we arrived today. Another coincidence. So did we. How awfully funny. Uh, would you care for a cocktail? Oh no, thank you, really. No, there are two here. I would love one, thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, to absent friends? To absent friends. It's awfully pretty, isn't it? The moonlight and the lights of that yacht reflected on the water. I wonder who it belongs to.
I'm glad we let the maid go. I think she's going to have a terrible cold. Going to have a cold? She's been grunting and snorting all evening like a whole herd of bison. Do you want a brandy? Just a little, please. You know, I'm, I'm glad we didn't go out tonight. Or last night. Oh, the night before. There's no reason to really when we're so cozy here. Exactly. It's nice, isn't it? Strangely peaceful. Mm. You know, it's a very bad reflection on our characters. We ought to be absolutely tortured with conscience. Oh, we are every now and then. Not nearly enough. We sent Viraj and Sundari a nice note from wherever it was. What more could they possibly want? You know, you're even more ruthless than I am. I don't believe in crying over my bridge before I've eaten it. Very sensible. Personally, I feel really grateful for a miraculous escape. I know now that I would have never been happy with Viraj. I was a fool ever to consider it. I wonder whether they met one another or whether they've been suffering alone. Well, let's not go on talking about them. It really makes one feel rather awful. Well, I suppose one or the other or both of them will turn up eventually. Bound to. It won't be very nice, will it? Perfectly horrible. <laughs> Do you realize, darling, that we're living in sin? Mm, not according to Catholics. Uh, Catholics don't believe in divorce. We are as much married as ever we were. <laughs> yes, my love, but we are not Catholics. Never mind. It's nice to know they'd sort of, you know, back us up. We were married in the eyes of heaven, and we still are. Mm. We may be married in the eyes of heaven, but we look like being in the hell of a mess socially. Who cares? Are we going to marry again after Viraj and Sundri divorce us? I suppose so. What do you think? I'm rather scared of marriage, really. Oh, yes. It is a dodgy, frowsy business. <laughs> I believe it was the fact of our being married and clamped together publicly that wrecked us before. That and not knowing how to manage each other. Do you think we know how to manage each other now? Oh, this week's been very successful. We hardly use Solomon Isaacs at all. That's because Solomon Isaacs is so long. We need to shorten it to sucks. All right. Darling, you're looking most awfully sweet in those pajamas. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are pretty ravishing, aren't they? <laughs> Do you mind if I come around and kiss you? Oh, not at all. The pleasure would be all mine. When we were together, did you really think that I was unfaithful to you? Yes, practically every day. <laughs> I thought you were too. Often I used to torture myself with visions of you bouncing about on divans with awful widows. Why widows? I was thinking of Carmen Lavazza, really. Oh, Carmen. <gasps> what did you have to go and say? Oh, Carmen, like that for? What a lovely creature she was. Lovely, lovely! Darling! Mwah. Did you ever have an affair with her? Afterwards, I mean. Why do you want to know? Curiosity. Dangerous? Oh, not now. Not dangerous now. I wouldn't expect you to have been celibate during those five years any more than I was. What? After all, Carmen was undeniably attractive, wasn't she? A trifle over vivacious, I always thought, but that was probably because she was fundamentally stupid. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you mean about not being celibate those five years? What do you think I mean? Oh, God. What's the matter? You know perfectly well what the matter is. Oh, you mustn't be unreasonable. I was only trying to stamp out the memory of you. I expect your affairs well outnumbered mine anyhow. Well, that's a little different. I'm a man. It doesn't suit women to be promiscuous. It doesn't suit men for women to be promiscuous. Very modern, dear. Really. Your advanced views quite shock me. Oh, don't be cross, Easter, darling. I haven't been so dreadfully loose, really. Five years is a long time. And even if I did nip off every now and then with someone, there were none of them serious. Oh, do stop it, please. Well, what about you? You really want me to tell you? No, I, I don't want to know. I take it all back. I don't want to know. I was madly in love with this woman from South Africa. Did she have a ring through her nose? And in every other conceivable place. <gasps> Ishan, we're tormenting each other. Sit down, my love. Please sit down. I'm scared. Very well. You know, we should have said Solux ages ago. Yeah, we're in love, all right. 
Don't say it so bitterly. Let's try to get the best out of this time instead of the worst. Hamlet. I'm sorry. What? Nothing. Come on, I know that face. What are you thinking? I was thinking of poor Sundari. Sundari? Yes, I get the feeling she loves you terribly and that she's dreadfully unhappy. Shut up, Mandy. We've been through that before. We've certainly been pretty busy trying to justify ourselves. It's not a question about justifying ourselves. It's the true values of the situation that are really important. The moment we saw one another, we knew there was no point going on. You think we should have done this anyhow? Of course. Otherwise, things would have been a whole lot worse than they are right now. And what if we'd never happened to have met again? Would you have been perfectly happy with Sundari? I expect so. Oh, Ishan. Come on, you needn't look so stricken. It would have been the same with you and Viraj. Oh, poor dear Viraj. <laughs> he really did love me. Splendid. You know, when I met him, I was so lonely and depressed. I felt like I was getting old and crumbling away unwanted. Yes, certainly is horrid when one begins to crumble. He used to look at me hopelessly, like a lovely spaniel, and I sort of melted like snow in the sunlight. Well, that would have been an edifying spectacle. Viraj really had great charm. You know, you must tell me all about it. He had a positive mania for looking after me and protecting me. That would have died down in time, sweetheart. You mustn't be rude. There's no need for you to be rude. I wasn't in the least rude. I was merely making a perfectly rational statement. Your voice was decisively bitter. Viraj had glorious legs, hadn't he? And fascinating ears. Don't be and silly. And he probably looked radiant in the morning, all flushed and tumbled on your pillow. I never saw him on a pillow. Oh, I'm surprised to hear that. Ishan! No need to be cross. What did you mean by that? I'm sick of listening to you go yap, 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 yapping about me. Oh, Viraj! Now listen, Ishan, once and for all, you just listen to me. My dear darling, Solox! But Ishan, listen! Oh, Solox! Oh! Two so minutes, Solox! About him. You are so sweet, Ishu, my Ishu. Oh, I'm even more in love with you than I was before. Isn't that ridiculous? Put your legs up. Are you comfortable? Almost. <laughs> there. Oh, how long? Oh, dear God, how long? What do you mean, how long? Oh, dear God, how long? This is all too perfect to last. You have no faith. Absolutely none. Tell us what's wrong with you. Don't you believe in... No. No, do you? Don't you believe in anything? I believe in being kind to everyone and giving money to the poor and being as happy as I possibly can. No. I love you so. Mm. <laughs> Darling, don't blow. It's giving me the shivers. Turn your face down a little. Is this better? Much better. Thank you, kindly. Angel. Ishan, Ishan, Angel. stop it. Please, Ishan, stop it. Ishan, Angel. stop it now. Ishan, stop. Why should I stop? You know you are being made love to. No, Ishan, stop, please. It's, it's too soon. I'm half the dinner. You know, you really do say the most awful thing. I don't see what I've said that's so terribly awful. You have no sense of glamour, no sense of spontaneity at all. It's difficult to be spontaneous when you have a crick in your neck. Well, why didn't you say you had a crick in your neck? Well, it, it's gone now. Oh. How convenient. You know, 
You really can be the most irritating person in the world. I fail to see what I've done that's so terribly irritating. You have no tact. No tact? You have no consideration. Too soon after dinner, indeed. Yes, much too soon. You know, that sort of remark shows a rather common sort of mind, I'm afraid. It does, does it? Oh, yes, it does. Very unpleasant. Makes me shudder. Making all this fuss just because your silly vanity's a little upset. Vanity? What do you mean, vanity? You just can't bear the thought that there are certain moments when our chemicals, oh, what do you call them, they just don't fuse. Chemical? What do you call them? Please, try to be a little more explicit. You know exactly what I'm talking about and don't you try to patronize me! Now look here, Mandira! Mandira! All right! Mandira! Oh, darling, darling, darling! Solace, solace, my love! Triple solace! thrilling woman that was ever born. Oh, you sure love you so much, my Shona, my sweetheart. Angel. Angel. Oh. Angel. Good Lord, do you think it's them? I wonder. Nobody else knows we're here. Then it's got to be them. What do we do? We're all right, darling. No matter what happens, we're all right. Now and always, my love. Then I don't care. Hello. Oui, 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 um, oui, madame. Uh, uh, je regrette beaucoup, uh, madame and monsieur in Madagascar. Good night. Oh, God, that gave me a fright. It sent shivers up my spine. What do we do if they suddenly walk in on us? Behave exquisitely. With the most perfect poise? Certainly, I should probably do a coat curtsy. <laughs> You know, things that ought to matter dreadfully don't matter at all when, when one is happy, do they? But what's so horrible is that one can't stay happy, can they? No, 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 don't say that, darling. This whole business is a very poor joke. You mean that sacred and beautiful thing called love? Yes, meaning just that. That's what I ask myself in my ceaseless quest for ultimate truth. What does it all mean? Dear God, what does it all mean? You mustn't laugh at me, my love. I'm serious. You mustn't be serious, my love. You must laugh at everything. If I laugh at everything, then I must laugh at us. Yes, we are figures of fun, all right. Oh, how long is it going to last, this ludicrous, overbearing love of ours? Who knows? Who knows? Shall we always want to bicker and fight? No, that desire shall fade along with our passion. <laughs> well, that's serious enough. No, it isn't. Oh, Ishan, you're talking nonsense. So is everybody else in the long run. So let's be superficial and enjoy the party as long as it lasts. 
Let's savor the delight of the moment. Come, kiss me, darling, before your body rots and worms pop in and out of your eye sockets. Shut! Worms don't pop up! I don't care what you do, see? You can paint yourself green all over. Run around naked in Buckingham Palace. Rush off madly with all the men in the world. And I shan't say a thing as long as you love me the best. Thank you, my love. And the same applies to you. Just that if I so much as catch you looking at another woman, I will kill you. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that awful row we had in Jaipur? Which one in particular? The one where your, 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 your curling irons burnt a hole in my brand new suit. It burnt my comb and all the towels in the bathroom. How long did that <laughs> row last? It went on intermittently for days. It was quite a rouser, wasn't it? It was the first time you hit me. I didn't hit you very hard. The manager came in and found us rolling on the floor, biting and scratching like panthers. Yes, I shall <laughs> never forget the look on his face. Ridiculous, utterly, utterly ridiculous. We were very much younger then. And much sillier. In fact, the real reason for that fight was Pratap Banerjee. You knew there was nothing going on between Pratap Banerjee and me. You made the entire thing up in your jealous imagination. You took presents from him. Presents? I only took one tiny little locket. You let him kiss you. You said you did. So what of it? So what of it? It gave him a lot of pleasure and it didn't hurt me. What about me? What about you? If you hadn't been so nosy and suspicious, you wouldn't have known a thing about it in the first place. Very nice point of view, I must say. Do you want some wine? No, thank you. I think I'm going to have some brandy. Why? You've already had two glasses. They were very small glasses. I don't see the point of you going on and on and on with your drinking. I would hardly call two small liqueur glasses of brandy going on and on and on. It's becoming a habit with you. Stop cribbing. Just because you don't want any yourself at the moment. Oh, don't be stupid. Here. On the What? Nothing. Oh, go on and say what you want. I don't care. Well, as a matter of oh, fact... Oh, be quiet! <laughs> it's a pity you don't have any wine. It made you a lot less disagreeable. It doesn't seem to have worked such wonders with you. Snap, snap, snap. Like a little adder. Adders don't snap. They sting. Nonsense. They have a little bag of venom behind their fangs and they snap. They sting! They snap! I don't care. Do you understand? I don't care. They snap, they bark, or they roll about like poops. I don't care! Oh. Did you see a lot of Pratap Banerjee after our divorce? Yes, quite a lot, actually. Then I expect you let him kiss you a good deal lot more then. Just mind your own business! Oh, you must have had a righteous time. No restraint at all. Very enjoyable. You never had much anyhow. You know, you've become quite insufferable, and I think it's because you're drunk. I'm not in the least drunk. You always had a weak mind. I think I've already mentioned to you that I've had small liqueur glasses of brandy. A child of two couldn't get drunk on that. Oh, go ahead and drink till your heart's content, until you're sick in your stomach. A very good idea. I will. Ridiculous ass. I beg your pardon? I said ridiculous ass. Thank you. Oh! You better turn that off. No, I won't. Turn it on again, please. I shall do no such thing. Very well, if you insist on being boorish and idiotic. Turn it off. It's driving me mad. Oh, do try to control yourself. You're being far too temperamental. Turn it off! I will not! Where do you think you're going?
darling, darling, I'm sorry. Stay away from me. I'm sorry. You stay away from me. Listen to me, Randy. Listen. Listen indeed. I'm sick and tired of listening to you, you damn sadistic bully. Thank you. Oh. A pretty display, I must say. Oh. Very amusing indeed. Oh. Stop it. What's happening? Where am I? I remember now. You said something? I said good morning. Oh. What time is it? 9.20. What are we to do now? Wake them up. No, no. Wait a minute, please. What's the matter? I couldn't face them yet, really. I couldn't. I feel dreadful. So do I. It's a lovely morning. Lovely? Oh. Oh. Don't cry. Don't cry. I can't help it. I can't help it. Don't. Please don't. It's all so squalid. I wish we hadn't stayed. What's the use? Well, we had to stay and meet them before they, we went back. We've got to straighten things out. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I wish I were dead. Now, now. Listen. Remember your promise. We've got to see this through together and settle things one way or the other. If we hadn't arrived when we did, they might have killed one another. They must have been drunk. She hit him. Oh, he'd probably hit her first. I had no idea people behaved like that, ever. It's so disgusting, so degrading. Ishan of all people. What an escape you've had. What an escape we both had. Oh, oh, good morning. Oh, Mandira. Where are you going? Far, far away. You can't. Why not? I want to talk to you. What on earth is the use of it? I must talk to you. Well, all I can say is it's very inconsiderate. Mandy, I... Oh, I suppose you're sundry. How do you do? Well, if that's the attitude you're going to take, I fail to see the point in you coming here at all. I came to see Ishan, my husband. I have no wish to prevent you. He's in there, probably wallowing in an alcoholic stupor. This is all very unpleasant, Mandy. That's why I said I was leaving. But that would be shirking. We've got would to just... Would you like some breakfast? Some coffee, maybe? Why don't you excuse me? I'll place an order for breakfast and I'll be right back. Oh, what a mess. ta da Ta-da! Well, how dare she? 
How dare she was? Behave so calmly, as though nothing had happened. I don't see what else she could have done. Insufferable, I call it. Oh, God! Ishan! 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 Ishan, Ishan! Go away! Oh! <laughs> oh, for God's sake, pull yourself together. and uh, breakfast. It will be here soon. I must apologize for this room being in such a mess. Oh, there's no use crying. It doesn't do any good. Ishan, where are you going? Canada. You can't leave. You can't go like this. I don't see the point in staying. You owe it to Sundari to stay. How do you do? I... I don't think we've met before. You must stay. You've got to stay. Very well, if you insist. I'm, I'm so sorry about the room. It, it really is a mess. Uh, can, can I get you some coffee? Oh, your, I mean my. <laughs> I mean Mandira has already ordered it. Oh, Mandira, good pad. Good to know the old girls up and about. We've got to get things straightened out, you know. Yes, it is so messy, this room. Just look at it. <laughs> You're being purposely flippant, but it'll do you no good. Sorry. What's to be done? I don't know. It's all perfectly horrible. I feel smirched and unclean, as though slimy things have been crawling all over me. Maybe they have. That's a very old sofa. Oh. <laughs> If you don't stop this flippancy, I'm going to knock your head off. Has it ever occurred to you that flippancy might cover a very real embarrassment? In a situation like this, it's in extremely bad taste. No worse than bluster and invective. As far as I know, this situation has no earlier precedent, and we have no prescribed etiquette to fall back upon. And so, I shall continue to be flippant. Oh, Ishan, how can you? How can you? I'm so, really, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's easy enough to be sorry. I'll never forgive you as long as I live. I would never have thought anyone could be so callous and cruel. I absolutely see your point. And like I said before, I'm sorry. Oh, what a glorious morning. How I do love Paris. It's so genuinely gay. Yes, we know. And it's heavenly being so high up here. You know, I found this apartment by the merest of chance. I was staying at the Plaza Athene, just down the road. Such a Such nice, a nice hotel, hotel with an enchanting courtyard, courtyard, with a fountain that goes plop, 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 plop. Oh, plop, this plop. is ridiculous, my dear. Now, Viraj, I refuse to discuss anything of the least important, at least until after breakfast. I couldn't concentrate. I know I couldn't. What manner? What poise? To be able to carry off the most embarrassing situation with such tact, with such subtlety and with such delicacy. Oh, go on, Mandira, you're making this so much easier for all of us. Please don't address me. I do not wish to speak to you. Splendid. And what's more, I shan't for as long as I live. I shall endeavor to rise above it. I have been brought up to believe that it's beyond the pale for a man to strike a woman. A very poor tradition indeed, but certain women should be struck regularly like gongs. <laughs> You're an unmitigated cad and a bully! And you are an ill-mannered, bad-tempered slattern! Slattern! Yes, slattern! 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 And fit wife! Oh, you! Oh, you keep your mouth shut! Oh, you mind your own damn business! Stop it! Stop it, please! There's no use going on like this! Say something! Do something! Oh, I'm not going to interfere. Let them fight if they want to. It'll probably clear the air anyhow. Yes, and why don't you come along with me into my room? Perhaps you'd like to change or something. Not really. Wash or something? Oh. Come then along. Very well. Now then. Now then what? Are you going to take back all those things you said to Mandira? Certainly. I'll take anything back so long as you stop bellowing at me. You're a coward, too. They want us to fight, don't you see? No, I don't. Why should they? Primitive feminine instincts. Warring males, very enjoyable. Well, you think you're very clever, don't you? A bit cleverer than you. But apparently that's not saying much. What? You just sit down. I will not. Well, if you'll excuse me, I will. I'm very tired. 
Oh, for God's sake, be a man! No, 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 look here. All this belligerency is very right and proper and highly traditional. But if you think about it just for a minute, you'll realize it's not going to get us very far. Oh, to hell with that! No, look, 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 look. I would like to explain to you that if you hit me, I should most certainly hit you back equally hard. I'm just as strong as you are. Then you will hit me, and then I will hit you, and you will go on and on until one or the other was knocked out. Now, if you can tell me satisfactorily how all that is going to help the situation, I will tear off my coat right now, and we can go at each other hammer and tongs immediately. It will ease my mind. Only if you won. I should win, all right. If you want to try. Certainly. Very well. Come on. Step back. Huh? A couple of steps. Thank you. Just a moment. Well? What did you mean when you said they wanted us to fight? It would be balm to their vanity. Do you love her? Is this a battle or a discussion? Because if it's the latter, I'd like to put my coat back on. I don't want to catch a chill. Answer my question, please. Do you have a cigarette? Answer my question. You know, it is a, a rather silly question if you analyze it. Do you love Mandira? I'd like to wring her neck. Do you love her? That's besides the point. It's not. On the, it's, the, it's the crux of the entire affair. If you love her, then you can forgive her and live with her in peace and harmony till you're 98. You're apparently even more of a cat than I thought you were. You don't think I'm not completely aware of it? I'm glad. This is all very unfortunate. Unfortunate, my God! It could have been worse. Well, I'm glad you think so. You know... I wish you'd stop being so glad for it. What do you intend to do? That's what I want to know. What do you intend to do? I don't know, and I don't care. I suppose you realize you've broken that poor little woman's heart? Which poor little woman? Sundari, you oaf! Come on, it's not as bad as all that. She, she'll get over it and forget about me in a month. I certainly hope so, for her sake. I intend to divorce Mandy, naming you as correspondent. All right. And Sundari will divorce you. And, oh. the, and the, it would be foolish of either of you to attempt any defense. Very well. And the sooner you get married to Mandira, again, the better. I'm not going to marry Mandira. What? She's a wild-tempered, wicked little woman. Well, you should have thought of that before. I did think of it before. You've got to marry her. I'd rather marry a ravening leopard. Look, I'm tired of all the shilly-shally. You're getting off a good deal more likely than you deserve. You're, you're just lucky that I haven't shot you yet. You know, if you had a spark of manliness in you, you would have shot me. You're all fuss and fume. One of these cotton wool men. And I despise you. You despise me? Yes, utterly. You're nothing but a rampaging gas bag. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. You should be ashamed to admit it. Where's Ishan? In there. What is he doing? How the hell should I know what he's doing? If you were half the man I thought you were, he would be bandaging himself right now. Ishan's just as strong as Viraj. Oh, really? I'd like it proved. There's no need to be so vindictive. You were abusing Ishan to me like a pickpocket a little while ago. Now you're standing up for him. I'm beginning to think he wasn't quite so much to blame as I had thought. Uh-huh, really? You certainly have a very unpleasant temper. It's a little difficult to keep up with your rapid changes of front. But you're young and inexperienced, so I forgive you freely. Seeing the depths of degradation that age and experience have brought you, I'm glad I am as I am. That was exceedingly rude. I really think you better go away somewhere. After all, Ishan is my husband. Take him with you by all means. If you're not very careful, I will. <gasps> Ishan, Ishan. What is it? Let me in, please. I want to speak to you. Heaven preserve me from nice women. Your own reputation ought to do that. Oh, go to hell. <laughs> Viraj. What? Nothing. What did you say to Ishan? I told him he was beneath contempt. Good. You know, I think you're quite mad, Mandira. 
I've often thought that myself. I feel so completely lost, completely bewildered. I don't blame you. I don't feel any too cozy. Had you been drinking last night? Certainly not. Had Ishan been drinking? Yes, gallons. Did he used to drink before when you were married to him? Terribly. Night after night he'd come home roaring and hiccuping. Disgusting. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Did he really strike you last night? Repeatedly. I'm, I'm bruised beyond recognition. Oh, really, Mandy? Raj, I'm most awfully sorry to have given you so much trouble. Really, I am. I behaved badly, I know, and there's no excuse, but something strange happened to me. And I am sorry and ashamed for having made you feel so unhappy. I can't understand it at all. It all seems so unlike you. It isn't unlike me. That's the trouble. I should have never married you. I'm a bad lot. Oh, Mandy. Don't try to contradict me. I know I'm a bad lot. I wasn't going to contradict you. <laughs> you appall me, absolutely. Go on, go on. I deserve it. Oh, I didn't come here to accuse you. There's no sense in that. Why did you come? To find out what you want me to do. Divorce me, I suppose. As soon as possible. Oh, I am thoroughly unprincipled. Sundari was right. Oh, Sundari's an ass. <laughs> yes, that she is, isn't she? I can't imagine why Ishan ever married her. Do you love him? She seems so insipid somehow. Do you love him? But she is very pretty in a rather shallow sort of way. Mandira. Still... Yes, Viraj? You haven't answered my question. I'm sorry, I've forgotten what it was. Oh, you're hopeless. Hopeless. Don't be angry. There's no sense in being angry. You're talking utter nonsense. No, I'm not. I mean it. It's ridiculous for all of us to sit around arguing with each other. You might as well go back to England and let your lawyers deal with the whole thing. What about you? I'll be all right. I only want to know one thing and you won't tell me. What is it? Do you love Ishan? No, I hate him. But when I saw him again, suddenly it was an odd sort of shock. It swept me away completely. He attracted me, he's always attracted me, but only the worst part of me. And I can see that now. I can't understand why he's so terribly trivial and superficial. Hishan was the first love of my life. And when I came face to face with him again, I completely lost grip of myself. And I behaved like a fool for which I shall pay all right. You don't have to worry about that. But perhaps one day when all this is dead and done with, you and I may meet again and be friends. At least there's something to hope for. Goodbye, dear Viraj. Do you want to marry him? I'd rather marry a boa constrictor. I can't go away and leave you with a man who drinks and knocks you about. You needn't worry about leaving me as though I was some sort of parcel. I can look after myself. Well, if it'll make things easier, I won't divorce you. We could live apart for a while and uh, after Sundari gets her decree against Ishan. We can wait a little while and then I'll let you divorce me. I see you're determined to make me serious, whether I like it or not. I married you because I loved you. Please, Viraj, not now. I expect I still do. One doesn't change all in a minute. You've never loved me. I see that now, of course. Perhaps everything worked out for the best, really. I thought I loved you. Honestly, I did. Yes, I know. It's all right. What an escape you've had. <laughs> I've said that to myself rather often in the last few days. There's no need to rub it in. So, do you agree about this divorce business? Yes, it's very generous of you. It will save you some of the much slinging, and we might persuade uh, Sundari not to name you. We might. Perhaps she might even change her mind about divorcing him. Perhaps. She certainly went into the bedroom with a predatory look in her eye. Would you be pleased if that happened? Pleased? <laughs> I'd be delighted. <laughs> oh. Ishan and I have reached a decision. How very nice. What is it? Don't be silly, Viraj. Just look at their faces. Feminine intuition. Very difficult. Feminine determination. <laughs> very praiseworthy. I'm not going to divorce Ishan for a year. I congratulate you. Sundari has behaved like an angel. Well, it certainly was her big moment. Ah, breakfast. Give it to me. So it all seems very amicable then. It is, thank you. I don't wish to depress you, 
But Viraj isn't going to divorce me either. What? I believe I asked you once earlier today not to speak to me again. I merely said, what? It was a general exclamation denoting extreme satisfaction. Sit down, Sundari. No, I must leave, really. I've got to catch the golden arrow and it leaves at 12. Surely you must have time for a little coffee, dear. No, really, I must go. But I, I shan't be seeing you again for so long. Living apart? How wise. Do stay, Sundari. Very well, just for you. Thank you. Sit down, Viraj, dear. A uh, latte or cappuccino? A uh, latte, latte, please. What would one do without one's morning coffee? That's what I often ask myself. Oh, do you? And what do you answer? <laughs> Viraj, latte for Sundari. Thank you. Thank you. And here's your coffee. Uh, latte for Thank me, you. please. Um, would you like a brioche? Yes, with some jam and butter. Thank you. No, thank you. <sighs> You're dripping, old boy. Thank you. This is lovely. This is lovely. <sighs> so, have you ever been to uh, Papua New Guinea? Uh, no. Where is it? In the Pacific. Oh, I thought it was nearby somewhere. No, no, no. I had an aunt who went there once. Well, I had an aunt who went to the deepest, darkest, remotest parts of Tanzania. You know, I really do love traveling more than anything else in the entire world. It gives me such a thrilling feeling of adventure. First of all, the excitement of packing and getting your passport and your visa, and then the thrill of actually starting and trundling along on trains and planes and cars. And then, the most thrilling of all, <coughs> arriving at strange places and seeing strange people and eating strange foods and... And making strange noises afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that was a damn fool thing to do. How did I know she was going to choke? Here, drink some coffee. I'll be okay in a minute. Just leave me alone. <laughs> you know, you waste far too much time trying to be funny. There's no use talking to Ishan like that. It wasn't his fault. Of course it was his fault entirely, making those rotten, stupid jokes. I thought what Ishan said was funny. Well, in that case, you must have a very warped sense of humor. It's better than having none at all. I fail to see what humor there is in incessant, trivial flippancy. You couldn't be flippant if you tried until you were blue in the face. I shouldn't dream of trying. You know, it must be very sad not to be able to see the fun in anything. Fun? I'd like you to tell me what you know, fun is. I pity you. Really, I do. I've been pitying you ever since we left Derville. I don't see any reason for you to pick a quarrel with me. I tried my best to be pleasant to you and comfort you. You weren't very comforting when I lost my suitcase. Oh, I have precious little patience for people who go about losing their luggage. I don't go about losing my luggage. If you had tipped that quarter enough, everything would have been all right. Small economies never pay. There's absolutely oh, no... Oh, for God's sake, be quiet. How dare you talk to me like that? Because you've been irritating me for days. Oh? You are the most completely idiotic woman that I've ever met. And you are certainly the rudest man I've ever met. Oh, well then, we're quits, aren't we? One thing is for certain, you'll get what you deserve, all right. And what do you mean by that? You know perfectly well what I mean. And it'll serve you right for being foolish enough to allow that woman to get around you so easily. And what about you, allowing that unprincipled rogue to persuade you to take him back again? He is nothing of the sort. He's just been victimized, as you are victimized. Victimized? What damn nonsense? It isn't damn nonsense. You're very fond of swearing and threatening and blustering. But when it comes to the point, you're as weak as water. Why, a blind cat could see what you've let yourself in for. Oh, don't you make those insinuations. I'm not insinuating anything. When I think of the things you've said about her, it makes me laugh. Really, it does. To see how completely she's got a hold of you again. Well, you can speak with great authority, having had the intelligence to marry a drunkard. Oh, so that's what she's been telling you. I might have known it. I suppose she said he struck her too? Yes, she did, and I'm sure it's perfectly true. I expect she omitted to tell you that she drank 14 glasses of brandy last night straight up. Ha <laughs> ha! And that the reason their first marriage broke up was because she used to come home at night at all hours, 
screaming and hiccuping. If he told you that, he's a filthy liar. He isn't. He isn't. And if you believe that, you're a silly, scatterbrained little fool. How dare you talk to me like that? How dare you? I've never been so insulted in my life. How dare you? It's a tremendous feeling of relief for me to be able to have an excuse to insult you. I've had to listen to your weeping and wailing for days. You clacked at me and sniveled at me until you've driven me completely insane. But I, I controlled my nerves and continued to be nice to you and help you because I felt sorry for you. I always thought you were stupid from the first, but I must say, I never realized that you were a malicious little vixen as well. Stop it! Stop it, you insufferable great brute! <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the play as much as we enjoyed rehearsing the last month and a half to get it on stage for you. Let me introduce you to the lovely cast, Shan Katari Libby. The indubitable rake, Michael Mutu. My, I mean his, uh, <laughs> Amira De Costa. And Viraj as Neelu. Neelu as Viraj. Thank you. <laughs> well, you can see how confused we are about our characters. Uh, one and a half months, she's been cracking the whip, making us reach the stage where we can perform as well as we did today. Ladies and gentlemen, our director, Sushma Ahuja. <laughs> He's come down all the way from Bombay, and for the last one and a half months has been working with us to get this production on stage. Thank you. Uh, on sets and lights, Victor Paul Raj. Hey, Victor! On sound, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Uh, production coordinator who's done so much for us, Gopi Nair. We are only as good as our backstage crew is. You saw the amount of stuff they had to bring to throw all over the place. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our backstage crew, Bigley. Chandani. <laughs> Galvin Quintal. Suresh. And last but certainly not the least, Mudli. And 
It's been a wonderful experience for us. We'd like to thank the Madras players for giving us this opportunity to be uh, on stage <coughs> under their aegis. Thank you very much to all of them. And a few words from our director. I'm, I'm just too pleased with the response. Please tell your friends to come tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last show we have here. And if you have enjoyed, I'm sure they will too. Please tell them. And thank you so much. You have been a wonderful, wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. The play is over. Thank you.